It's the photo that has come to define National Highway's custodianship of the historical railway's estate, revealing the hidden reality of the company's infilling programme. 1,600 tonnes of stone and concrete were placed in a rural landscape around Great Musgrave Bridge at a cost of £124,000 and two bat roosts. There was no dialogue with either Musgrave Parish Council or the local highway authority. Two heritage railways who, for more than 20 years, had aspired to reunite by relaying the line under the masonry arch were not consulted either. They wrote a letter of complaint when National Highways claimed otherwise in media statements. The structure, engineered 160 years earlier by Sir Thomas Bouch, was erased from the Cumbrian landscape in 2021 amidst claims that it might collapse. It was an act that illustrated the conflict between narrow short-term decision-making and the need to respect our railway heritage, recognise ecological value and environmental impacts, as well as the potential of legacy assets to help secure a greener transport future. The most significant and expensive obstacle to fulfilling the government's plans to reverse the beaching cuts of 1960s and 70s uh, is restoring the infrastructure, trackbed and bridges particularly, so short-sightedly destroyed after lines were closed. Can she confirm that Highways England have now reduced their hit list of 134 structures to be destroyed to 69? And will, will she instruct them to consult with not just local authorities, but cycling and walking groups and heritage railways before they go ahead with any more of the cultural vandalism which we've already seen? In 1998, Great Musgrave Bridge was conservatively assessed as having a capacity of just 17 tonnes, but it was repointed in 2012, restoring its capacity to 44 tonnes. Although modest localised mortar loss was recorded in 2017, it wasn't sufficient to meaningfully affect capacity, and National Highways recorded the bridge as presenting no significant risk to public safety following an inspection in 2020. But 16 months later, it had been infilled under emergency permitted development rights. In an email to Eden District Council, National Highways engineer claimed that there was a measured loss of 38% of the mortar in the joints and the crown of the arch had dropped. They went on, Our examination process and the recorded failure by 2017 of repairs carried out in 2012 confirmed that the bridge was being overloaded and that works were required to prevent the failure of the bridge and avert a collapse but there was no evidence to support any of these claims and the risk of collapse was described as preposterous by a firm of masonry arch bridge specialists. Minor defects may have occurred when the bridge was built and the formwork stripped. They sometimes get a, used to get a sag, but looking at that, I mean, the parapets look straight. The soffit, yes, you always get stones uh, sort of becoming loose over time, but pointing keeps them in place, basic day-to-day -day maintenance. In ministerial briefings, letters and media statements, National Highways implied that Eden District Council had not challenged the infilling of Great Musgrave Bridge until after it was substantially completed. But this was misleading. On the 28th of May 2021, before substantive works had started, a planning officer told National Highways that we are looking to make an assessment as to whether these works constitute permitted development or whether planning permission should be sought. As such, we would ask that you do not commence with the works until such time as we have made this assessment. In response, National Highways engineer said, We consider the works to be permitted development as they will prevent a future collapse and preserve public safety under Class Q. On this basis, I am not going to ask the contractor to stop works. Class Q emergency permitted development rights only last for 12 months, which prompted Eden District Council to ask National Highways for a retrospective planning application if it wanted to retain the infill permanently. 911 public objections were received and the scheme was unanimously rejected by the Council's planning committee. An enforcement notice has since been issued requiring removal of the infill by the 11th of October. That work is now underway. Well, obviously, we're delighted that uh, common sense has finally prevailed and it's being dug out. Um, but obviously we're appalled at the, the, the sum of money that's been wasted. Um, first of all, filling it in and then digging it out. 
And obviously our other concern at the moment is what national highways might do to further strengthen the bridge. Um, because clearly if they infringe the, the swept envelope, which we require to uh, legally to be able to run trains one day under that bridge, then they might as well leave it, leave it filled in. The controversy around the infilling of Great Musgrave Bridge prompted the government to pause National Highway's major works programme in July 2021. Following Eden District Council's rejection of the planning application, the company said, We will also no longer consider the infilling of any structures as part of our future plans unless there is absolutely no alternative. But that commitment has since been loosened. Six structures are provisionally proposed for infilling during the current financial year, whilst a seventh could be demolished. The schemes require ministerial approval and, in most cases, planning permission. National Highways has still not made clear its long-term intentions regarding 137 structures previously earmarked for infilling or demolition, 30 of them under emergency permitted development rights. Although safeguards are now in place to ensure better management and decision-making, the threat to the nation's legacy railway structures has not entirely receded.